Yes, sir. This is RAZ 2024 04 request uh, for a new subdivision off of Clyde Stone Road. It's approximately 62 acres. It is currently R1, and the request is for R10 suburban residential in order to develop approximately 110 lot subdivision. You'll notice here that this property is within the suburban area and the urban service area, and where R10 uh, density is recommended. Um, and also, in addition to the county's extension of utilities along Clyde Stone Road with its paving. You'll notice in 2020, uh, property to the east was rezoned to R10 with a site plan that did include a few conditions, uh, chiefly being lots of budding Clyde Stone Road could be no less than half acres, in addition, to a thousand feet down Simpson Lane. Lots fronting should plot front uh, lots should front interior roads only, with no additional access to Clyde Stone Road. And again, sidewalks and neighborhood amenities should be included in this. This was that subdivision. You'll note here the orange lots are the half acre lots. The light blue you see there are R15, and the yellow being R10. The green being the community area, and the dark blue the stormwater management. The applicant is proposing more or less the same. Our uh, half acre lots in orange again along Clyde Stone Road, the light blue here being the R15 lots, and the yellow lots being the R10. You will note some significant wetlands on the property in that top left corner, which is the southwest corner of this property, which abuts uh, Valwood School and the uh, adjoining neighborhood uh, uh, Grove Point to the very southeast corner. If you look at overall combined, the two neighborhoods could potentially look out like this. Again, you see that half acre zoning in the orange and the R15 in the blue. So again, TRC had no technical objections to this. And again, find it consistent with the comprehensive plan and surrounding land use patterns. Therefore, recommend approval with conditions that the lots of Bunny Fly at Stone Road shall be a minimum of half acres in size. <coughs> So their second access is going to be from Dallington Road to Simpson Road. That's that correct. Would be connected to correct. Valentine. And it was subbed out in the Valentine. Perfect. <coughs> Any other questions for staff? Then we will open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in favor of this case? Uh, please come forward. State your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Farrell Scruggs, 502 Eagle Road, Colorado. Uh, I'm representing Cat Creek Development, the applicant, and uh, speaking in favor of the zoning. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions uh, concerning the matter. Um, I think we're presenting a, a good plan as it's laid out. Um, we put a lot of thought into the uh, mixture of lots and the, uh, the road design. Um, I'd like to ask you guys to vote uh, as recommended. Um, we feel like we're in keeping with the comprehensive plan. Um, as mentioned, the infrastructure is in place, the uh, winding and paving, limestone road, water and sewer. Uh, also, I have spoken, uh, spoke with um, a few of the local residents, uh, one of which has kind of been representing some of the folks in Meadowood subdivision, um, and we kind of mostly agreed, and, you know, I think, uh, to what we've got laid out. So, um, like I said, just glad that you go along with uh, staff recommendations. Any questions for Mr. Strokes? Uh, one of the questions that I have, um, with looking at the concentration um, of the lots and kind of the design, uh, and also some of the trends that I'm seeing um, locally where it comes to a lot of these developments, is the plan for um, this particular property with concerns, of course, with adjacent residents, is the plans to uh, potentially sell this off to uh, D.R. Horton or I've been asked that several times. I've not talked to them. They have not talked to me. Um, I mean, I'm not going to stand up here and say you can't 
happen, but there's been zero talk. I would love to see local builders build there. That's the intent. Thank you for your answer, sir. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? So please come forward. Stephen Cooper, 4709, Sonnenfeld, Federal with the Subdivision. On the way it's been working with Mr. Scruggs. Um, he's presented both drawings um, to match out the lot sizes. One thing he and I are both in, kind of been in agreement with is mirroring the minimal square footage per lot based off of what D.R. Horton's uh, had to abide by on their development. Uh, also, we talked about the exterior finishes being no vinyl. Um, that way it kind of keeps incorporates everything around the neighborhood. Meadowwoods, Grove Point, across the tracks at Stone Creek, everything right in there. All the rest of the R ones to the north of us are, you know, brick, side, you know, um, concrete siding, stone, wood, whatever. We're just eliminating the vinyl. Um, as D.R. Horton, when they took over the property from Stoker Group, they tried to slide in with a bunch of vinyl on their houses because they didn't want to buy by what was approved or had been discussed. And so that project did get put on halt until uh, we proved otherwise. By minutes from the previous commission meetings. So we would like to also have that in writing that, you know, what he and I have talked about and agreed upon that everything kind of mirrors what's currently being, being done. And of course, if it doesn't, then we have opposition. So. Mr. Cooper, did you have covenants in place before the property ownership transfer was made or between? There were covenants that. Mr. Scruggs and I have discussed right. based upon what the other property has been developed is. Okay. So it was discussed. We kind of got it in. Uh, we put it on, I mean, we have it right. I mean, we wrote down everything we've talked about so far, but I mean, I think he and I both were saying shoulder to shoulder, so this is what we discussed. It's not in writing. Um, but we just, the biggest thing, and, and he said, <coughs> multiple times said, you know, eliminate the vinyl. Because it's just not apples to apples, and we're still doing that. that. Any questions, Mr. Cooper? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the time has expired on one part of the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak against this case? Please come forward. Please state your name, sir, and address. I'm Larry King. I live at 4903 uh, Meadowwood Circle, which is immediately north of Gladstone, opposite the development. Uh, by now, it has fences across the back, but Gladstone is in my backyard. Um, and they're already developing uh, the Ballon's Island shortly away from us. I have some concern. One right now is that that's densely wooded right there on the other side of Gladstone. As a narrow, recently paved two-lane road going through there already with heavy truck traffic from Scrubs Concrete down the road and construction and school buses and everything else going down there, fire trucks. Because it's one of the main paved north or east-west routes between Valdell and 41. The next one up is Bethany Church Roads and further up north is 122. So we have caught a lot of traffic. I've lived there since it was a dirt road until now it's paved and it's a drag strip. Okay. Uh, police wait outside my walls in my backyard and that's sometimes trying to catch a few folks. Um, are they going to landscape these lots or are they just going to build them and, and leave them? My biggest concern is traffic on Clydestone. It's already picked up quite a bit. And if you have that many units there, 110, that they're developing and they haven't even finished developing the Valentine one yet and they're all, it's already picking up. Uh, that's going to be a very crowded road there. And this, both of those subdivisions really only have two ways out, which is on Clydestone. You either go towards 41 or you go towards Valdell. Because the only other road that connects out of there is Simpson, but it's not a direct route. It goes through several other subdivisions to get out of there. 
So you pretty much have to rely on Cliostone to get out of that area. And that's my, one of my biggest concerns. Uh, we also have wondering if there's going to be turnoff lanes to go into the entrance to it, because apparently there's one main entrance off the of Clydestone, opposite where our main entrance is going to our subdivision, Meadowoods, which is uh, East Ridge. So is there going to be a turnoff lane in there? Um, I think that's all I really wanted to cover. I guess Hay Higher Ed schools have the capacity to absorb a lot of this development. Any questions for the speaker or comments? Thank you, very Thank you sir. Okay. JD, do you know if the plans to pay for widening the flat zone include the turn lane at all? Or the no, sir. I can speak with the county engineer again, uh, but at this time he expressed no concerns for a deceleration of the right turn lane off of that. Um, Again, when this plan, when Clasdo was approved years ago and finally paved, they, they factored in uh, R10 density patterns for traffic considerations. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak against this case? If so, please come forward. Seeing no one, that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further questions or discussion? Then I'll seek a motion on this case. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding this case, REZ 2024-04, um, the request does seem to be consistent with the uh, pattern of development in this area, and it is uh, has been found to be inconsistent with the uh, comprehensive plan and land use patterns. So I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval with the condition that the lots abutting Kaisel Road shall be a minimum of one half acre in size. Thank you. We have a, rec a motion to recommend approval by Commissioner Wiles. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Roundtree. All those in favor of the motion to recommend approval? Uh, unanimous. Thank you, Commissioner. It 